G'day, Birdman Pete with you, talking about multi-rotors as usual and quadcopter motors. This little critter has given great joy, motors running perfectly. I've got quite used to flying 250 size FPV, I cut my teeth on it just three months ago and in the three months it's flown almost every day and so far I've only broken two propellers. So that suggests that I'm doing okay for an old bloke. But I thought I'd like to try something different, and I thought I'd like to try something bigger. And this is what I came up with. This is the prototype for a thing I call the giant, for obvious reasons. And I decided on the multi-rotor 4206 530kV motor, very well priced from my usual supplier, couldn't really quibble with anything about it. The four motors arrived a few weeks later, I set them up, they all ran beautifully, and then I started to fly it. And all of a sudden, I had a bit of a problem on one motor. I say a bit of a problem because I could get it to run, and when it was running, it flew beautifully. But when it started, it often did a lot of this, flapping about, and then suddenly it would spring into life, and I'd be fine. But as the weeks went by, it spent much more time flapping around and much less time flying, and I was getting quite frustrated by this, and worse still, by the time this one had become inoperable, two of the others were starting to exhibit this same faltering startup business. I was very frustrated. I tried everything I knew. The obvious things to check are dry joints in the AC connections, or also in the DC connections, I guess. Um, you might also wonder about the length of these three wires. I read somewhere that they are supposed to be the identical length. Well, mine certainly weren't identical, but they were pretty close and I thought they'd be good enough. And you might like to check the little circlip, which is on the bottom end of this shaft here, because if that circlip is touching anything, that level of friction is quite enough to give a bad start up. I changed all these things and it made no difference. And while I was thinking about it, and it took a few weeks before I got my head around this, I thought to myself, there's so little in a multi-rotor motor to go wrong in these outrunners. What can go wrong? You've only got magnets. The magnets were all there. You've only got coils. The coils looked fine. What could be wrong? And I kept going back to friction. I kept thinking about that circuit friction. And then I thought much more seriously about what I had noticed when the motors were new a little hint of blue epoxy at the top of the motor's frame here. And I started to wonder about that. So it was time to dismantle the worst of the motors and see what I could find. Let's have a look at some of the close-up photographs I took on day one of the inspection. So this is more or less what I saw from the outside. You see that blue streak between the copper coil and its end cap and the outer rim of the magnet mount. And it doesn't look like much, does it? I've actually been attacking it with a knife there. The paler blue colorings are where the knife has hit it, and the darker blue sections are where the knife hasn't yet had a chance to scrape away at it. It's pretty tough stuff, and I decided it would be much safer if I removed the copper section from the magnet ring before doing too much carving. I should explain also but if you go online and look at the sample photographs published by both of the major worldwide distributors for Turnigy Motors, you'll see exactly the same blue tinge on the top frame of the brand new motors as they are in the factory. I think there might be thousands of motors in circulation with this fairly minor problem. When you look inside, it looks slightly worse. We're now looking at the bottom end of the magnet ring and I'm not really very worried about the epoxy which is down low on the magnets it is that large lumpy bit up at the top that worries me most and particularly those bits which are hanging on the under surface of the flat top face and while the motor was like this it was time for me to get busy with my scraper and this is what it looks like now I've scraped away all of the blue epoxy, I can just see a little bit of hint of down at about half past five-ish. And I'm sure that was the cause of the problem because since 
The first motor was cleaned, it ran perfectly, and I decided then to clean all four, four of them. I found that all four of them were to some degree exhibiting clear signs of excessive adhesive. And here's the debris of all that I scraped out of one motor. I've left the circlip in the shot to give you an indication of the size of the pairings that I've pulled out. So what do you make of all of that? Would you have sent those motors back? Well, I, I guess really one should, but I'm too old for that sort of caper. I would like to tell you a little bit more about this aircraft. These four motors and the complete airframe with this battery, that's 4.5 amp battery, um, weighs 1.7 kilos and it flies comfortably for 16 minutes plus. I've had flights of over 17 minutes and I haven't really been struggling to improve the duration. It, at that price, motors like that are a really rather nice addition to the collection and, and there's the battery and it's pretty chunky but 1.7 kilos it's still not a very heavy quad. Have fun.